Well, March Madness tips off this week, and that means it is time for this year's sleepers, Cinderella's, and buzzer beaters. 68 teams have punched their ticket to the NCAA men's basketball tournament, and they all will be competing to reach the final four. Last year's champion, Villanova, is the number one overall seed. The Wildcats are looking to be the first back-to-back -back champion since Florida in 2007. Kansas, North Carolina, and Gonzaga round out the top seeds. Here to help you fill out your bracket, CBS sports college basketball analyst Chip Patterson joins me from Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, Chip. Hi, how you doing? I I'm hope that well. uh, March Madness has bitten you and you've gotten your bracket <laughs> all filled out. You're doing all your research now. Yeah, you know, football is more my thing, but let's not belabor that. Let's talk about this, the East region, okay? Who do you like and any Cinderella's capable of pulling off upsets? Because, you know, I need a storyline to follow here, Chip. Well, I'm so glad that you mentioned that Villanova is trying to be the first team since Florida because I am actually picking Villanova to lose, and I think it might even come to Florida. Mike White, Florida's head coach, has been to the NIT four straight years, but now finally making his NCAA tournament debut. They play tremendous defense, and I think number one overall seed Villanova will go down either to Florida, but if not in the next round against Duke. Listen, Duke is playing as well as anybody in the country right now, and I think that it will be Duke in New York City winning the East region and advancing to the Final Four. Hmm. All right, like uh, let's turn to the West now. Do you expect it to come down to Gonzaga versus Arizona? And any sleepers in this region? Uh yeah, I think that what you're looking at in the West is Florida Gulf Coast. We all remember Dunk City uh, from a few years back in 2013, winning the hearts of everyone. But this year's Florida Gulf Coast team, I think, is going to knock off Florida State in that in-state battle. That game will actually be played in Florida and have a lot of Florida Gulf Coast fans there. In terms of Gonzaga and the top seed, that is a coach in Mark Few who is trying to make the Final Four for the first time ever. But I think it's going to be another coach, very, very successful coach, Sean Miller who will get his first Final Four invitation. So I've got Arizona, the two seed, winning in the West and advancing to the Final Four past Gonzaga, the one seed, which I do think could lose possibly even as early as the Sweet 16. All right, what about the Midwest? Can anyone knock off Kansas? No, I don't think so. Uh, I th here's what I like about the uh, the Midwest. Uh, one of my favorite double-digit seeds to watch is Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State started the season 0-6 in Big 12 play, but they won nine of their next 12, and they've got a player in Juwan Evans who's the put the team on your back, put the ball in my hands, I'm going to go get you a bucket kind of guy. I've got Oklahoma State knocking off Louisville in the second round, going on a Cinderella run to the Sweet 16, but when you're looking at this field, there's nobody that can match Kansas that has the backcourt play of both Frank Mason and Devontae Graham. Hmm. All right. Uh, the South looking stacked here with North Carolina, UCLA, and Kentucky. Who do you like? Oh, man, the glamour region. This is where all the blue bloods are. The South is so much fun. Uh, I would love to be in Memphis, Tennessee, as North Carolina, Kentucky, and UCLA all converge. Uh, the first time that North Carolina and Kentucky played, it was in the CBS Sports Classic, a 103-100 to Kentucky win. Malik Monk had 47 points to lead the Wildcats. And if we could get a rematch of that game, that in the Elite Eight could be the best game that we see in the entire tournament. Uh, the South region also has another Cinderella team to watch. Middle Tennessee State, they are a 12 seed right now, right there. They're going up against a five seed in Minnesota, making its NCAA tournament debut under Richard Pitino. And I think that what we saw from Middle Tennessee last year, they could do again. Reggie Upshaw is a tremendous player. Giddy Potts is so much more than a very nice and fun name. He is a tremendous basketball player. So I've got Middle Tennessee, the 12 seed in the South, making a Cinderella run to the Sweet 16. But for the region, I think it's the Tar Heels because listen to this. Every single time that Roy Williams has coached a number one seed North Carolina team, they've made it at least to the Elite Eight, mm -hmm. if not all the way to the Final Four. And so I think that they make it to the Final Four out of the South. All right. Chip Patterson, thanks so much. Appreciate it.